volume and surface area of composite shapes. So we spent some time looking at the volume of individual three-dimensional shapes, uh, such as a square base pyramid, prisms, triangular or rectangular prisms, cones, spheres, spheres, and so on. Um, so now we're going to take a look at some real-life examples of the combinations of those three-dimensional shapes. So we're going to go through two problems, and the two problems involve uh, an ice cream cone and uh, a pill. Um, so problem number one determines the, wants you to determine the volume of ice cream if the diameter of the scoop is 10 centimeters and the height of the cone is 20 centimeters. And we're going to make some assumptions when solving this problem. Um, we're going to talk about what those assumptions are. Um, we, as mathematicians, we need to take some liberties when we're solving some questions like this. For example, we're going to assume that the entire cone is filled with ice cream. So what if possible assumptions are made? Um, we can say the cone is filled with ice cream. Okay, so we want the cone portion to be filled with ice cream. And we're going to assume the scoop on top is a semi um, or a half a sphere. Um, so the scoop on top is half a sphere. Um, we wouldn't want an entire sphere because it wouldn't balance very well and it'd fall off onto the ground and then you'd cry. So we're going to assume it's just half of a sphere um, to make sure that it sits nicely on that top of the cone. So those are the assumptions that we're going to make when we're solving this problem. So we know, what do we know about this? We know that the diameter of the scoop, which is also going to be the diameter of our cone, is 10 centimeters which means that our radius is five centimeters, so half of that diameter. We also know that the height of the cone is 20 centimeters. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is determine the volume of ice cream that we're going to get in this cone. So in order to do that, we need to find the volume of shape one, which is going to be our cone, and the volume of shape two, which is going to be our half of a sphere. So this will be half a sphere. Okay. And then obviously our cone down here at the bottom. So when we're figuring out the volume, we need to figure out the volume of our cone. So if we refer back to that formula sheet, the volume of the cone is pi r squared times height divided by 3. So this one is quite simple um, in terms of calculations because we don't need to figure anything else out. Everything's given to us for this one. So I am going to use 3.14 for pi. My radius is 5 squared times my height of 20 divided by 3. Following order of operations, 3.14 times 25, that's 5 squared, times 20 divided by 3. Now I'm going to simplify my numerator. 3.14 times 25 times 20 gives us 1,070. So 1,570 divided by 3. So the volume of my cone works out to be about 523. I'm not going to keep any decimal places for this question. So 523 centimeters cubed. So now I want to figure out what the volume of half of the sphere is going to be. Okay, so in order to do that, well, I need to think about, well, what is the volume of a sphere? So the volume of a sphere is 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, and then half of that, I'm going to divide that again by 2. So that's the strategy that you can use to solve for that. 
So I'm going to have 4 times 3.14 times my radius, which is 5, to the power of 3, divided by 3, and then I'm going to divide that answer by 2. So 4 times 3.14 is 12.56, 5 cubed is 125, divided by 3, and then divide that one by 2. So 12.56 times 125 is 1,570. I'm going to divide this by 3 and then I'm going to divide that by 2. So this gives us 523. Um, I'm going to keep two decimal places until the end. So 0.33 divided by 2. Gives us 200 and 60, I'm going to round this up to the nearest whole number, 62, and my units are centimeters cubed. So the total volume, and I'm going to write this right in this little box right here, the total volume is equal to the volume of shape 1 plus the volume, so I'm going to label this one as 1, this was my cone, and this was the volume of shape 2. So the volume of shape 1 plus the volume of shape 2. So the volume of shape 1 was 523 centimeters cubed. The volume of shape 2 was 262 centimeters cubed. And if I add those two together, I get 785 centimeters cubed. So the total amount of ice cream, so the volume of ice cream I'm gonna get is 785 centimeters cubed. So therefore, the volume of ice cream is 785 centimeters cubed. So the next thing we want to do is to determine the surface area of the cone. So when we're thinking about an ice cream cone, we don't have a top because if we have a top, then we can't fill it with ice cream. So when we're thinking about the surface area of a cone, we need to take that into consideration. So I'm going to try to squeeze this in in this area right here. So the surface area, the, normally the surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi r s. But because we don't have that circle at the top, we can get rid of, we can get rid of this portion right there. So we just need to find the surface area of the um, outside of the cone, so not including the top. So in order to do that, I need to find the slant height. So if I come back here, remember the slant height is the hypotenuse if I was to draw a right angle triangle here. So that's important for us to think about as well, right? So this is our slant height. So if I was to do my calculations over here for Pythagorean theorem, my A is going to be the height of my cone, which is 20, so 20 squared. The B is going to be the radius of my cone, which is 5 centimeters, or 5 squared. And the C is the S that I'm trying to find. So 20 squared is 400 plus 25, which is 5 squared. That's going to give me S squared. So 425 is S squared. So the square root of 425 is equal to S. So S ends up becoming about 21. So 21, if I round this up to a nice whole number, 
about 21 centimeters. So now that I've determined what my slant height is, then I can figure out my surface area of just the outside of the cone, so not the top. So I'm going to do 3.14 times my radius, which is five, times my slant height, which I just calculated as 21. So I've taken that number, the 20.6, and I'm rounding it up to the nearest whole number. So I have 3.14 times five times 21 gives us 300 and again I'm going to round this up to the nearest whole number again so it's going to end up becoming 330 and my units are centimeters squared so therefore the surface area of the cone so just the cone part not the ice cream is 330 centimeters squared. So the next example that we're going to look at involves a pill. So we're going to think about um, the volume of medicine that would fit inside of a capsule. Um, and we're going to I know that on your sheet it's a two-dimensional object, but we're going to imagine that it's a three-dimensional pill capsule, and we're going to, um, again, we're going to make some assumptions. So we're going to determine the volume of the medicine that will fill up the capsule, and we're also going to determine the surface area of the capsule. So what assumptions are we making? Well, we are assuming that there are there is no empty space in our pill capsule. So normally, if you ever looked at a capsule, if you got some medication from a doctor, um, there's there's a little bit of uh, empty space in there. Um, but we're going to assume for our question that there is no empty space in that capsule. So just like when we looked at our ice cream cone, we're going to look at the shapes that make up this pill capsule. So if I was to look here, and I'm going to draw in these lines. I'm going to have shape number one, which is a cylinder. So remember this is a three-dimensional object, so if I were to cut this, um, the rounded parts off, I would end up with a cylinder. And then if I piece together, I'm going to call this 2A and 2B. So 2A and 2B end up making an entire sphere. So 2A plus 2B equals a sphere. So that's important to remember. So I'm going to, when I'm figuring out the volume, take the volume of the cylinder and I'm going to add it to the volume of a sphere because the two end pieces will form one sphere. So the volume of shape one, which is a cylinder, is pi r squared times height. So I'm just referring back to that formula sheet that I have to figure out what my formulas are going to be. So the volume of my cylinder is pi r squared h. So I know that I have a radius of 0.5 centimeters, so that's labeled to us right there in our diagram, and I have a height of my cylinder of 1.7 centimeters, so that's important for us. So our, this is our radius, and this up here is our height. So I'm going to have 3.14 times 0.5 squared times 1.75. So following order of operations, so 3.14 times 0.5 squared gives us 0.25 and then times 1.75. And the last step that I want to do for this one is to multiply these three numbers together. 3.14 times 0.25 times 1.75. So that gives us, I'm going to keep two decimal places, uh, 1.37, and my units will be centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of a cylinder.
So now we're going to figure out the volume of the sphere. So the volume of shape 2 is my sphere, which is found by taking 4 times pi times the radius cubed and dividing that by 3. So my radius is still my 0.5, so I'm going to take 4 times 3.14 times 0.5 to the power of 3 and dividing that by 3. So 4 times 3.14 is 12.56 and 0.5 to the power of 3 is 0 0.125. And I'm going to divide this by 3. So 12.56 times 0.125 gives us 1.57. And dividing that by 3 gives us a volume of approximately 0 0.52 if I keep two decimal places. and my units are centimeters cubed. So the total volume is going to be the volume of our cylinder, so the volume of shape one, added to the volume of our sphere, which was the two rounded pieces at the end there. So it's 1.37 plus 0 0.52. So the total volume of this pill capsule is 1.89 and my units are centimeters cubed. So the next thing we want to do is figure out what the surface area of the pill capsule would be. So in order to do that I need to think about what is the outside of this shape. So I want to figure out the surface area of just the cylinder part that I'm going to see and the surface area of my um, sphere. So the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. But you have to remember that the 2 pi r squareds are the circle parts on the end. So this would be the top and the bottom of your cylinder if you were to stand them on edge. Now when you look at a pill capsule, you don't have a inside edge there. So we're actually going to eliminate this portion of our formula because we don't need a top and a bottom of our cylinder. So that's the, cylinder, the surface area of shape 1. So the surface area of shape 1 will just end up being 2 pi r h. Now when I'm looking at my sphere, if I was to put the 2a and 2b together, that creates one sphere. So we don't have to think about um, dividing anything or cutting anything out um, because that um, the, the outside of a sphere is, is all it is. Um, so the surface area of shape 2 is going to end up being just our 4 pi r squared. So if we wanted to figure out our total surface area right away, that formula would be the um, surface area of shape 1 plus the surface area of shape 2 so in our case, it's going to be 2 pi r h plus 4 pi r squared. So once you've determined what the formula is going to be, now we can substitute in our values. So 2 times 3.14 times our radius, which is 0.5, times our height, which is 1.75, plus 4 times 3.14 times 0.5 squared. I'm squeezing that in. All right. Multiplying my first four uh, values together, so 2 times 3.14 times 0.5 times 1.75 gives us 5.495. 
4 times 3.14 is 12.56. We've seen that number a few times already. And 0.5 squared is 0.25. So now I want to multiply those last two numbers. So 0.25 times 12.56 gives us 3.14. And lastly, to add those two values together, so 5.495 plus 3.14 gives us 8.6. And if I want to keep two decimal places, that'll round up to four. So 8.64, my units are centimeters squared. So the last thing I want is a therefore statement. Therefore, the volume of the capsule is 1.89 centimeters cubed and the surface area is 8.64 centimeters squared.